All right, hey, what's going on, happy people? We're here in Blaine. This is the Blaine Harbor in Blaine, Washington. The last time I was up here, I walked into this little restaurant on the side of the bay. It's called Drayton Harbor Oysters. I didn't think anything of it. I ordered a dozen oysters and immediately I was so blown away. Like their oysters were so much better than any other oyster I'd ever eaten in my life. I got to talking with them and they have an oyster farm right out here in the Puget Sound. I wanted to go see this farm because I love oysters, but I am virtually ignorant on them. So Mark, the owner, is a fantastic guy and he invited us out today. I don't know anything about it, but I did have Tyler and Tim over at Silver Stag make them two custom oyster knives. These are the only two in existence and we're about to give them to them. What's up, man? How are you guys? Sarah. Sarah, awesome. That's Sorry, Mark. That was... Yeah, so this is phase one of the oyster farm business. Um, this is what we call our FLUPSY. FLUPSY, F-L-U-P-S-Y. It's an acronym for floating upweller system. And basically it's a buffet for oysters for producing all these guys, right? Oh, oh wow. So at this point, these are pretty dirty, um, but what's neat is that you can, if you pick one of these up, they've got the super fragile shell yeah. on the front. So that's what we call their new growth. So all this right there, yeah. you can just bend it off. And that's probably the growth in the last like four days, to be no honest, way. since we last cleaned it. So these guys feed like mad, they grow super fast. And we'll grow them here until they're a half inch, and then they actually go out to our farm. Okay, boss, we're here to work. What do we do? All right. This is our workload for the week is putting these guys in their own bag over here and putting these guys in their own bag over there. Um, what we like to do before we do that is kind of shake the bags a little bit and that's to knock off all that new growth, right? So this afternoon we'll come out when the water's up here, we'll pull this guy with the boat, take it back to the barge, tip it on our table, and we'll be sorting this guy from that guy. My best bro back home is named Joey Haluska. He and I get oysters all the time. But again, you're getting oysters that, like, we go to this place called Restaurant Depot on Tuesdays when they get their order. Yeah. They may get their order then. How long yeah. how long and, has that oyster you, been floating around? And you can act like you can you can find that out. So that's the big tip that I gave to people. There's something called a harvest tag. It's you've probably seen them in our shop, but they're these little white pieces that, white slips that basically tell the story of every batch. So the date that they were harvested, the date that they were shipped, the temperature that they came out of the water at, all that information is there. A restaurant can't sell an oyster without having that. Is this roe? Yeah, so that's midshipman roe, good find. From a salmon? Uh, no, so from a little, they're a super cool fish. We'll probably go find some, but they're called a, a midshipman. It's like a sculpin. And oh, they, they croak and like they glow in the dark. They have a bunch of photophores on them. They have adhesive eggs that are poisonous. Like so you that. can't eat those? No, no. These piles are oh, my, look at this. yeah. This is what I call my midshipman mitigation. Can I grab them? Yeah, they do have some spines on them, but if you pick them oh. up from underneath. We, um, I, I and here's their row, right? So we have a lot of these guys that live underneath our bags. So when we find them with their row, then we move them. We've got three piles up here where we like to move the fish and their eggs That's so that their population one. keeps on going. Yep. Oh so my God. these all at night, <clears throat> these will all light up. That's like their mating mechanism. Oh. Um, wow. And then you can hear them croak like that too, which is pretty cool. Those fish are like, I'm hot for you. Watch this baby oh, glow. But they're pretty neat. You can see their mouths, plenty of teeth. Touching them, are they venomous to the touch? No. no. They're just, uh, they're one of my favorites. They're pretty cool. So we try to take care of them out here. Hot diggity, these things are cute. Yeah. Is that a starfish? Starfish. starfish. Yeah. But on the big oysters, we come in with the knife on the side. Um, the muscle's always up here, so you can't really go in on the hinge like we like to because it, you're just going to bust every knife if you try because that oyster's so damn strong. So if you come in, you kind of just get between the shells and you cut that muscle, you can pry the shell back. So that's how you open these big dogs. Um, okay, can we this? can we take one back and open them later? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I really want to see this. So these are like, again, planted in the 80s. So a lot of farms, when they spread their oysters, they'll just like, throw all their product on a barge and then kind of pressure, like spray it off and they'll just fan out and go everywhere. Or people will shovel them off in their boats. What we do 
We'll grab our bags, our, our float, or our tumble bags, and we'll individually, each one of us, my crew, will come out and we'll walk and kind of spread them like this so that we're ensuring that we're getting the right density. If, if you look out here, there won't be any like thick piles um, because we've actually walked through and done this for you know three days straight. And what we're doing there is we're also knocking some of the growth off the oysters. We're tumbling them around one final time before they <clears throat> they sit in their free range mode for the next six months. And they're perfect. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we're jazzed on these guys. So basically, I'm picturing myself coming in in November with a headlamp on at three in the morning when you don't want to have to search for stuff. Right. And it's all right here. So I'm just going to kneel down. <clears throat> and I'm going to have that bushel with me and I'm going to be picking all these oysters. And basically, in this little grid right there, that's a dozen. So I'm going to get like probably two dozen oysters before I even have to move, right? And that's what I like because that makes your work easy. Um, you can screw this up by spreading them way too thick and then that's going to affect the shape and the, the, the fatness of the oyster. I'm not, a, I'm not a restaurant guy, I'm not a business guy, I'm a fish biologist. So what I'm trying to do with, with this business is everybody that works in our oyster shop, our oyster bar, our oyster factory also works out here. So yeah, every single person that's ever working in that oyster bar is probably 50-50, 50% there, 50% out here. And that's also working with our oyster seed, that's working on the flats, that's working on the barge. What's super special about that, and, and you know, is you can walk in and you can chat with Becky um, and she can tell you everything about the process. So what that oyster bar has done that I had no idea it would do is it's made us better farmers because we're able to see our product more. Okay, so. Genius, right? That yes, works. Genius! <clears throat> Brilliant! <laughs> but um, so whenever I came in, Becky was the bartender, nice girl, and she's she's shucking oysters and she throws like one away. Mm -hmm. She's throwing away oysters that me and Joey would be like, give me that, man! And she goes, no, it's not, it's not right. It's, it's not up to snuff. Uh, I was like, what do you mean it's not up? To? I'm mm -hmm. thinking, just give it to me. Yeah. Don't throw it away. But they're real particular. Yeah. You're real particular about what you produce mm -hmm. because every single one is like an experience. Yeah, yeah so. we want people to come back, right? We, would, we don't want someone to sit down and have a, a plate of a dozen have two oysters that are kind of like mediocre. We're trying to hit that, that upper level and uh, that's how you do it. All right, so let's go back to the office and uh, check out more about these oysters. Perfect. Thank you. This is our office. This is Tony and Jaden right here. Hey, what's up, man? How you doing, buddy? Good, good seeing you again. Good see you guys as well. How's hey, it going? Hey. I feel like I'm on Waterworld. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Pick up keeper! <laughs> <laughs> Alright you guys, so Tim and Tyler over at Silver Stag oh, yeah, sure. made you some, some custom little oyster knives. Now, they may be just decorative, or you may use them someday. I mean, try one right now. <laughs> you guys have breakfast yet? No, man. Right. Cool. They have a sharp point, they go in nice and easy. They have a nice spot to them. I like it. I can like it. Oh yeah, clean shot, clean shot. All right y'all, we are back on the deck and we got the Mammoose Boone and Crockett Gigantor oysters. Now, we're gonna throw them on the grill, but you always wanna make sure that they're the right side up. See how this is a nice deep cup? That's the top. So we wanna set the oysters on the grill just like that. We're gonna grill them. Then I'm gonna put a topping on them. We're gonna make the best po' boy sandwich ever. All right, so we've got some bacon. Add some shallots into that. And we'll get some green onion. Not that much. Throw that in the mix. Good. You want your bacon almost done before you start wilting in your shallots and your green onions. A little salt, pepper. Look at that. Let's 
So this is done the way I like it. We're just gonna turn it off and let it sit. And what happens is as it cools down and as our oysters get finished up, this will just sort of like thicken and become an awesome flavor. We are getting close. And the closer I get, the better it smells. Oh, that one's already opened up. Yes. Holy macaroni. Look at this. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I'm not even dumping out any of that juice. Like my buddy over in Staniel, Bernard. That's the gravy. any of it. Oh, man. We'll just let it sit in there for maybe a few more minutes. Put it in our hoagie roll. Y'all ready for this? Oh. Yep, that's hot. Mom, what do you think? Well, it looks delicious. One oyster is big enough to do the entire po' boy. I don't want anything to go to waste. That right there is the most amazing oyster po' boy I've ever seen. It's been a pretty good trip, hasn't it? Super good. Yeah. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this day and for all of our blessings and for our health and strength, our friends, and this wonderful trip. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Well, thanks, Mom. Thank you, Robert. All right, look at that. Take the first bite. I just before y'all got home, I just ate a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. That's her way of saying it. Heck no. Mm. Mm. The flavor is out of this world. Anybody that likes oysters would love that. Mm-hmm. And uh hot. -huh. Mm. I can't even explain to you how good that is. Joey Haluska, thinking about you, brother. Man, I wish you were here. I probably should have let it cool down a little bit. I'm probably gonna have no skin left in my mouth. Gotta give a huge shout out to Tony, Jaden, and Mark. Today was awesome, and I, I really appreciate you taking us out on the flats with you, showing us around, because all I've ever known is that I like oysters. I never had any clue how much work went into them. Everyone at home, I appreciate you all being a part of this. I appreciate you watching all these videos from the Pacific Northwest. We've had an amazing vacation, and I thank you all from the bottom of my heart. Take care, God bless, and we're gone.